So Zhang Wei, you published two papers and you submitted three more in just a couple of months, really. I mean, that's, that's a huge achievement. And I'd love to find out a little bit more about how you did it. But just before we maybe get into that, like, what was it like before those recent successes? I mean, you know, when you decided to start working with us on published research, uh, I think back in October, November 2024, what was it like back then? And what were you struggling with? Yeah, as far as I can recall, I, I suppose it should be last year, July. I heard about this platform, Academic English Now, from YouTube, because I was so struggling with the structure of my whole PhD thesis. I, I mean, last year, July, it's uh, just uh, three months uh, for me to submit my PhD thesis. So I felt confident, but not that confident. And my supervisors also uh, recommended me to find someone to do the proofreading. So I'm searching and searching online. And then I accidentally to know this platform. It, it was very useful. But the struggling thing is that, you know, English is not my mother tongue. So just as I mentioned, I felt confident in my whole thesis. But I'm not sure from the native speaker perspective whether it is good or not good enough. So I need some um, native speakers' suggestions. And uh, also, my PhD thesis is a publication format. And uh, before I joined this platform, I was struggling with the publication, especially the journal selection and the, the how to reply to the uh, reviewers' comments. I remembered. Before I joined this platform, one of my papers almost uh, took more than six months to just uh, keep changing the journals. And uh, they, many times it's just a desk rejection, but I have no idea why it was rejected. So I need some more suggestions and uh, more, you know, the guidance on which part should I do to improve it, but not rejection, rejection, times by times. I mean, what, what was that like for you? Because it sounds, it sounds incredibly frustrating to me. And I suppose the motivating that you, you know, you write papers, but they keep on being rejected from different journals and you don't know why and how to improve them. What, yeah. what was that like yeah. for you? Yeah, I felt so demotivated because, you know, it's at the end of the PhD and uh, maybe this perspective is not that correct, but I thought that as long as I engaged and as, as long as I mm, make effort to do the research and to engage in my PhD thesis, the time was approaching to the, the VIVA date or the submission, I was very unsure about the publication. I need something to improve my confidence. Absolutely. And so it sounds like, you know, before it, it had taken you, you know, six months back and forth with, with various journals, not to mention actually writing the paper in the first place. And then it sounds like, yeah. you know, since then, since that July, 2024, you've defended your PhD, you published two papers, you submitted three more that are undergoing review. Uh, you became a lecturer. Yeah. I mean, you've achieved so much in, in the same almost amount of time, just slightly longer than it had taken you before to get one paper rejected. What was that like for you? I mean, what's like the biggest change that you've seen? I changed a lot. I mean, from my confidence and my writing still, because after I joined this platform, based on my uh, the comments from all my coach, whatever from Lataya or from Lena, they are all so professional and supportive. And every time, I, I guess for me, it's not only the feedback. They are so good at to provide the constructive feedback. For example, this sentence is not incorrect or it's uh, a little bit redundant. It's just the problem, but they will also provide the suggestion. Maybe you will consider how to revise it like this, this, this. So it gives me the, the thought. I mean, next time or the, in the future, when I write the similar uh, writing, then I can learn a lot from it and to avoid the similar mistakes. Tell me more about that constructive feedback, because I think that's a lot, you know, many PhD students or researchers miss. I mean, what was that like for you and how, how did it help you, that constructive feedback? Because I also received some comments from the journal reviewers. They give me the comments like, your introduction lacks 
the good flow. But for me, I thought that my article was already good enough. But you said it's not good enough. But I don't know which part it should be improved. But from the platform, from my coach, they will tell me maybe the first paragraph you need more linking sightings between the first paragraph and the second paragraph, and maybe、uh, your introduction, the significance, or the define of the key concept should come earlier. So this one, I know how to improve and how to correct it. Yeah, I guess it has to be like very specific so that you know exactly kind of what you need to do. Because I mean, if you knew how to tell a coherent story in the introduction, you would have already done it in the first place, right? So just to、yes, comment that yes, your yes, introduction yes. isn't coherent doesn't doesn't really、um, help that much. Yeah. You know, was was there anything else、mm-hmm. like aside from feedback that you felt like helped you a lot in order to be able to finish the PhD, publish papers, become a lecturer? Yeah, I I also feel. Connected and、uh, from this platform, you know, we can always post whatever the struggling things we are experiencing and the difficulties and all the questions we can ask anytime. And the other peers, they in this platform, they are so friendly and they are keen to provide any help. Whatever you ask the question, they will provide their suggestions. It's just like you are in a great community and you are not alone. Why is that so important for you? Was that something that you felt like you were lacking before that sense of community? When I was doing my PhD, my peers they are also supportive. But you know, it's it's different. Sometimes when you feel the support or the suggestions from the strangers that you never know or you never met them, they always can provide me some suggestions from different perspectives. But When I was doing my PhD, we are all in the same department. Maybe we are from the same research field, and、uh, they are also good. But I, I always, I care much about the support、mm. from anyone. As long as the people can provide the support. Yeah, I suppose it's very motivating, isn't it, to be around like a group of of people who have the same goals and are very motivated and and supportive.、Mm. That. Uplifts you, and I suppose when there are difficult moments and and roadblocks and challenges that can motivate you to move forward, right? Yes. And you said one interesting thing that you know, in here you also get support from other points of view, maybe people from outside of your field. Why is that、mm-hmm. valuable for you? Because sometimes you know what what I hear from people as well is that you know they ask if. We will provide,、uh, you know, a coach who is an expert in your specific field, which obviously we don't do because then、mm-hmm. we would need two hundred fifty-three coaches in a million different fields, right? So,、yeah. I mean, what was that like for you, and why did you find it beneficial that I suppose your coach is not really in your field either, and the people in the community are not really experts in your field either? For me.、Uh... First and foremost,、uh, I, I guess the publication they always、um, just in the social science they have the fixed pattern, and、uh, whatever you are in which field, as long as we follow this structure or follow this flow. But why I like the suggestions from the people outside of my research field because my supervisors always told me that if the people who are not the expert in your field. And they can also understand what you are writing and what you are trying to tell. Then it means you are doing a great job.、Mm. So I value the suggestions from the people from outside of my research、mm. area. I guess I guess that that is a very good point that maybe some people overlook because yeah, I find that as well that when I read papers from other fields, sometimes vastly different from mine. If they flow really、mm-hmm. well and I understand everything, that probably means that it's an exceptional paper. I mean,、yeah. you, you've achieved so much in so little time, like in the last nine months or so. You know, PhD defended, two papers published, three more submitted, which will probably publish soon. Grant applications. You're a lecturer、mm-hmm. uh, at a university in in China. I mean, most PhD students would dream of this of this outcome. You know, having achieved all that, like, w- what advice, I suppose, would you give to other PhD students who might be, or even researchers who might be struggling with publishing papers and maybe with similar issues to what you used to struggle with?、Mm, suggestions. I I will suggest that they to try this platform first 
because from my experience, it's helpful and useful. And uh, yeah, I I love this platform. One more suggestion is that don't be unsure, but it's very difficult to to, to be not unsure. So the the thing I guess they can do is to find the suitable platform or the coach. I mean, in this platform to just to find a right place to improve their writing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's super important because I suppose you know all of us can eventually maybe figure stuff out on our own, but ultimately it will probably take mm -hmm. way longer, right? I mean, it took you several years of the PhD. And then the paper was still getting rejected. And then in, in just the space of 10 months, yeah. you achieved all of that, all these papers, PhD finished and, and the lecturing job, right? Mm, yeah. And the one more thing, yeah, sorry, may I add one more yeah, absolutely. suggestion? Yeah, it's just my feeling. I found that we should let the, the expert to do the professional thing they are good at. So um, I, I guess maybe some of the PhD students, they have a concern that if I find some support or help from others, it shows that maybe my ability is not that enough. But I will say no, because the people, they are good at the different things. So we are good at to do the research, but we need some people who are good at to revise or provide the feedbacks about the writing or publication. Then we need the support from this kind of the expert. Absolutely. And it's a whole mindset shift because I think as a, as a PhD student, you're constantly told, you know, you should figure it out on your own. You should know how to do this because, you know, you need mm. to be an independent researcher. But at the end of the day, I mean, there are people who have already figured it out before you, right? So it shouldn't be a how-to question yeah. where you spend the years trying to figure something out on your own. But there are people who have already done it, right? Yeah. So it should be maybe a who question, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, find an appropriate mentor or platform that will just, you know, allow you to to cut the, the learning journey. You know, the reason why I recommend this platform, because uh, I guess it's more than the service to provide the feedback. It's also kind of like the training, the thought training about how to revise your own article after the rounds of the rounds of the revision. I also learned a lot from how to rephrase the sentence, how to write the article. And also, you know, so many useful videos that you already posted on the community. It's very, very helpful. Yeah. So I suppose for you as well, it's like a, like a skill that you're, you're mastering for, for the rest of your academic career that you'll be able to reuse over and over again. Right.